are back with an action-packed edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. It's Monday evening. Hope you and yours had a good Easter holiday weekend. Our weather was decent enough on Easter Sunday, and uh, today has been kind of, you know, kind of gloomy with uh, some rain this morning and a lot of clouds for this afternoon. We're going to do more of a March review and a look at the longer range forecast in future editions of this video this week, but we've got so much active weather in front of us for the next day or two that we're going to focus mostly on that. We'll just do a quick review of today's numbers. It was a seasonable start to April with 53 this afternoon. 54 is our average high on April Fool's Day. 2010, we had 83 degrees for the record high and it was 14 for the record low back in 19. 64. All right, next couple of days, really the next 24 hours or so, very, very active as low pressure winds up across the Mississippi Valley and into the lower Great Lakes. This evening we have ongoing severe weather from the oh uh, parts of the uh, Ohio Valley back through the Plain States into the Missouri Valley. Uh, severe thunderstorm watches and tornado watches run from central Texas all the way up to St. Louis and into parts of Illinois this evening. This is part of a broader risk for severe weather that takes us through tonight from uh, Texas all the way to about Cincinnati and Marietta in southern Ohio. Our risk for severe weather is relatively non-existent around here tonight and into tomorrow morning, but then things will begin to change. Now, in addition to the risk for most of our severe weather modes over the next 24 hours, there's a zone where we're probably going to see too much rain over the next 24 hours or so. We've already had quite a bit of rain and there's more where that came from. So flood watches are out for the I-70 corridor from uh, parts of Illinois through Indiana into Ohio and over towards Pittsburgh and points off to the south. We haven't had quite as much rain around the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. And even though we'll get a healthy amount of rain in some places over the next 24 hours, widespread, really commonplace flooding issues are not expected. There can be some localized instances of flooding. Now this is the big story for tomorrow. You know, you never want to single out other <laughs> uh, meteorologists in the weather enterprise or entities in the weather enterprise, but last night's day two severe weather outlook for Tuesday was a little bit weird. Um, they shifted a lot of the risk areas to the south instead of to the north, and so uh, we woke up this morning to kind of a ho-hum looking map for day two across most of Ohio and Western PA. And that kind of flew in the face of a lot of model data last night and this morning. And boy, they uh, corrected, they course corrected big time around midday today and had a huge update at midday. The Storm Prediction Center issued a uh, an outlook for day two that we don't see very often with a lot of Ohio in the level four moderate risk for severe weather tomorrow into tomorrow night. Now the level four risk does not include our television viewing area, the Youngstown area in particular, but Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, some of the far southern suburbs of Cleveland down towards Canton, Akron, Dover, New Philly. All those places are in that level four moderate risk for severe weather tomorrow. Now, in our viewing area, a good chunk of our area is either in the level two or level three risks. And again, chances are you kind of know what these risks are about if you're watching this video. But if you're not, we kind of show these risks on a one to five scale. Five being the highest, one being the lowest, and severe weather can occur in a level one risk, certainly, but it's, of course, more and more likely the higher the numbers are. And these level uh, three risks or enhanced risks, not something we see very often in our parts of the uh, country. In fact, it's been almost a year, and it's usually on average only once, twice, maybe three times per year that our television viewing area is in an enhanced risk. That level four risk uh, that a lot of Ohio is in is even more rarefied air around here. In fact, we can put some numbers on this. It's been since the fall of 2013, since our TV market has been in that level four moderate risk of severe weather. That was a weird November outbreak that kind of underperformed a little bit locally, but nonetheless, we were in a moderate risk uh, that particular day. It's been almost exactly a year, 362 days, since we were last in an enhanced risk in Northeast Ohio and into Western PA, specifically the Youngstown television market. Levels one and two, that's much more common. Uh, we're in a level one or a two risk, I should say, a slight risk, if you will. A uh, couple of dozen, if not more times per year. It's actually been since August, since we've been in a slight risk around here. A marginal risk, very, very common. And we were last in that at the end of February. Now, in addition to the threats for hail and damaging winds, there is a pretty significant tornado risk involved in this uh, situation tomorrow. Uh, all those black lines, that's what we call in the weather enterprise a hatched area. And when you see one of those issued by the Storm Prediction Center, that means they're particularly 
um, worried or concerned about significant tornadoes, not EF zeros and ones, but EF twos and higher. Um, this is a, a setup that can produce some long track significant tornadoes, the kind of tornadoes that can really do a lot of significant damage. And so you can see that a good chunk of Ohio is in that hatched area. Now, even outside of the hatched area, even if you ignore that, you know, there's a 5 to 15% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of any location in most of the state and into parts of Western PA. And those numbers are very high when you consider that the chance on an average day of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any location is way below 1% a 10 to 15 percent chance that is very very significant we got a lot going for severe weather tomorrow we've got instability as warmer air pushes in from the south and we have a lot of wind shear changing of the wind direction and speed with height and so when we uh, try to put a parameter on this the stp significant tornado parameter those numbers get pretty lofty out in western and central ohio uh, these are not percentages there's not a 0.5 percent chance of a tornado locally but it's more of just an indice and when you see numbers up to two to three to four, those kinds of numbers, those are pretty significant for our part of the country. And these numbers are certainly higher out towards I-71 in central Ohio than in far eastern Ohio and western PA, but they're nothing to sneeze at uh, in our area. So we are concerned about an isolated tornado. And here's one model depiction of some uh, rotation tracks uh, tomorrow evening. Now, this doesn't look like much, right? But, you know, there's there could be some discrete supercell thunderstorms late tomorrow afternoon, especially into tomorrow evening, and especially out here, um, we might see some legit planes-like supercells. And even if we don't have a whole lot of discrete supercells, a line of thunderstorms pushing across the state can have embedded rotations. We're going to maybe see those S signatures in the, in the uh, velocity data tomorrow evening, where the the wind velocity data on the radar looks a little looks a little curly, looks like an S. Sometimes, uh, you know, those kind of circulations can produce uh, tornadoes within a you know kind of a band or a squall line of thunderstorms. So you're going to want to have re multiple redundant ways of getting warnings tomorrow evening. These are some of the best. We always recommend people have a NOAA weather radio. The penetration of NOAA weather radios in our part of the country is not nearly what it is in places like Alabama and Kansas. But still, they're available around here. They're available anywhere online. They're relatively inexpensive, and they're kind of like a, you know, a smoke detector for severe weather. They're they're relatively fail safe. They don't rely on a cell phone signal. Um, they can be on battery power um, if the power goes out. Um, the Storm Tracker 21 app. Make sure you have your push alerts turned on. Make sure WIA Wireless Emergency Alerts is activated on your phone. And of course, if we have ongoing severe weather or even a heightened threat of severe weather, it looks like it looks like we will we will launch some live streams tomorrow evening. And if we have tornado warnings in our area, we'll go live on television. So the setup tomorrow, a warm front pushes in in the morning. Now we'll get wet tonight into tomorrow morning, some rumbles of thunder, maybe even some bouts of pretty heavy rain for a time. Um, that's with our warm front pushing in. Then we get a break for the midday and into the afternoon. Now as we go towards late afternoon into tomorrow evening, this warm sector is very impressive. It's going to be kind of muggy, especially for this time of the year. We're going to have a lot of wind energy aloft pushing in along what we call low-level jet, and anything that gets going in that environment will uh, have a lot of potential, and I think this potential will probably be maximized right around sunset tomorrow evening. So again, anything in here we'll have to keep a very close eye on. And while the threat is certainly highest to our west in places like Columbus, Cincinnati, Akron maybe, um, the threat around our area is nothing to sneeze at. We've got a stay weather aware tomorrow evening. Now, this cold front's a doozy. It pulls through, and then spring mode is over. The rest of the week is blustery. It is colder. Um, temperatures kind of hold steady-ish on Wednesday. There'll be some rain showers around for a time. Not a lot of rain, I don't think, on Wednesday, but just kind of a raw day. And then, yeah, I think the air mass will probably be cold enough to support a few wet snowflakes mixed in with raindrops at times um, Thursday and into Friday and maybe early Friday night as well. Now, of course, the snow would not add up, add up to much here locally, maybe occasionally, maybe a dusting on a, on a car top or something, um, maybe up in the hillier terrain, up in the primary snow belts of northeast Ohio, northwest PA, on the grass, maybe there's a small accumulation. Better chances of more significant accumulations once you're up into the mountainous areas in New England and also along the spine of the Appalachians particularly 
where it gets really elevated in parts of West Virginia. All right, let's shift gears and talk real quickly about the eclipse. Now, we're now within a week of the eclipse, and so now we're into the time frame that we can get more specific with forecasts. And whilst things can still change between now and next Monday, we are optimistic that the weather will be at least partly favorable, if not very favorable, around here. Um, it, it'll depend some on the thickness of what I think will be a deck of high clouds. This is a model depiction of the clouds right around time of maximum eclipse, about 3.15 next Monday afternoon. This is the path of totality, of course. And there could be a pretty favorable corridor, especially, say, like this. I'm not so sure about Texas and maybe Arkansas. But from St. Louis or just south of St. Louis, up through the I-70 corridor, up into Northeast Ohio and into New England, any cloud cover that's around is probably gonna be of the high, thin variety. And if that's the case, that will not spoil the show. Now, of course, we would want it to be just crystal clear, but some high, thin clouds would not be too big of a deal. So our first kind of official forecast, if you will, for next Monday around eclipse time, about 59 or 60 degrees. Again, in the path of totality, the temperature might drop a few degrees during totality. And right now our rain chance is very minimal. Because it's a week out, we're not gonna say zero, but we may take these to zero at some point if the model uh, trends continue over the next few days. And just a reminder of who's in totality and who's not. Uh, we're gonna keep talking about this over and over again this week. Um, who's, who's gonna have the best show and who's not. Generally speaking, it's a good chunk of Trumbull, Western and Northern Mercer, and far Northwestern Mahoning. The rest of us, 98, 99%, but as I've said many times before, there's a big difference between being in 99% totality and 100% totality. 100% is where you want to be. It'll range from 30 seconds of totality on the southern edge in Trumbull County to northern Trumbull County, northwestern Mercer. You'll be in totality for up to a few minutes. And up near Cleveland, it's more than three minutes. Akron, over two minutes as well. So again, we're optimistic that the weather will cooperate. It doesn't look like rain at this point. And at worst, we might have some high clouds, but probably not the lower clouds like we had outside today. But we'll keep updating the forecast throughout the week. We'll keep updating Tuesday evening's outlook on social media, on all of our outlets, and including our newscasts over the next 24 hours. And of course, we're going to be your source for the most in-depth coverage, most detailed coverage, and the coverage that is most likely to keep you safe if we do have an outbreak of severe storms Tuesday evening. Thanks for sticking with me on this long edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. Have a great rest of the night. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.